Some background. We have two maternal aunts who have suffered psychological issues. One is a diagnosed bipolar schizophrenic. My brother's always been an angry kid. And as we grew up, he would also keep weird things a secret. Did he graduate college or did he drop out? What does he do for his main income, etc.? My brother and sister-in-law have been together for nine, going on 10 years and have been married for 1.5 years. They are about to have twin boys. My sister-in-law is eight months pregnant. Four months ago, I would have told you my brother and sister-in-law were endgame, the perfect married couple. Now it's off the rails. It all started for me. When my sister-in-law announced they would have two baby showers, one at her mom's house and one at their house, because both sides of the family are quite large. The shower at her mom's house was first, and I noticed my brother was really miserable. He's my older brother and is often, in my opinion, and but. But that day it was something different. Maybe it was that my sister-in-law was also a bit miserable. But she's also pregnant with twins, so she can be whatever the hell she wants to be. And that's okay. But my brother's attitude was abnormal for such a happy occasion that I even mentioned it to my boyfriend when I got home, and my mom and I spoke quietly about it at the shower and said a silent prayer for their, my brother and sister-in-law's marriage future. A few days later, my sister-in-law texts me, your brother's going through something. I think his bottled up past trauma with your parents is really getting to him as he's becoming a father. I wanna support him, but he's completely shutting me out emotionally and physically. I would appreciate it if you could reach out. He needs people who love him. He's not himself. I would also appreciate it if you didn't mention that I sent you to check in. Not trying to spy, don't need a report back. Just want him to have the support he needs. I reply, hey, I was thinking about checking in on him honestly, so I won't mention anything. I'm sorry you have to deal with him in his current state. There's definitely reasons why I don't want to be a parent myself, and my brother's having to face probably some of the same tough realities. Is he working today? What's his schedule, do you know? She replied with his schedule and also told me, I can only imagine the pain both you and your brother went through growing up. I didn't have that experience. And your brother keeps saying because I didn't, we're too different. He planned a trip to Sedona during Mother's Day weekend to do ayahuasca. WTF, I think to myself. So I give my brother a call and I try my darndest to have a heart to heart with him and feel out what's going on with him. I notice he is refusing to use team building language when talking about the future and the twins. No use of the word we or us when discussing raising the kids. For me, that was a huge red flag. The next big concern for me was when I asked him about the ayahuasca soul searching journey he was embarking on out of the blue. He wouldn't answer any direct questions about it. Really weird. The whole discussion, he was very nonchalant about everything. It was kind of unnerving, especially when I could feel in my bones that something wasn't right with him in the moment. I let my sister-in-law know that I checked up on my brother and I wasn't quite sure what to make of him, but he's a bit moody and he is definitely stressed about the babies. My sister-in-law tells me a few hours later, maybe it isn't about the babies and he just doesn't love me anymore. He has been emotionally cheating on me with his ex Hannah, I think. I caught him texting with her since it came up on his phone in the car. I immediately call her. She recounts the last month or so of my brother being emotionally hurtful to her, being very mean and spiteful, and him choosing out of the blue to start sleeping in the other bedroom. It seems like he is blaming everything on my sister-in-law, including being pregnant and all the hormonal and emotional problems that come with that. Like they didn't spend a year doing intrauterine insemination. It was an emotional conversation and I was sick to my stomach afterward. I promise to be there for her and try my best to remind my brother how lucky he is in life to have her and how wonderful their future was going to be if he sticks it out because marriage is hard and love is a choice. Two short weeks later, my brother and sister-in-law have their second baby shower. This is one week before Mother's Day, the weekend that my brother was going to Arizona to do ayahuasca. All goes off without a hitch. I steal away a moment of my sister-in-law's time before the party kicks off to check in. And she said they have had an emotional and physical connection the other day and seem to be hopefully taking a positive turn. Good. Fast forward to Mother's Day weekend. I wish my sister-in-law a happy Mother's Day and see if my mom heard from my brother. She said she hadn't, but oh well. 
My boyfriend and I continued to speculate on what my brother may actually be doing out in Arizona. The next day, Monday, my sister-in-law messaged me and says, it's been 72 hours without any contact with my brother, and she was getting worried. Frick. My stomach drops again. I'm getting sick of feeling sick over my brother. I think to myself, maybe my brother also got the chronic depression from our father's side and took his life out in the desert. I know that'd be my plan if it was me and I was feeling some type of way. So I tell my sister-in-law who is full panic mode, calling Arizona police and hospitals and the hotel in which my brother's spiritual journey launched from to no avail. I tell her my boyfriend and I will be over that afternoon to relax with her and cook dinner for her. We arrive and start talking about my brother and what she's been going through. We all start talking about the crappy itinerary he shared with her that looked like he typed it out himself. If it was a real spiritual journey, wouldn't it have been easier to print off the email confirmation or screenshot of the actual itinerary? My sister-in-law also brings up Hannah. Can't believe we're talking about this woman who 10 years ago dated my 19-year-old brother for a year and a half and broke up with him twice in that time. Oh, and also, my brother was lying about his age to her the entire time, WTF. My sister-in-law tells me that my brother's been talking to her, and he says it's not a big deal. It feels more like talking to an ex-wife, and it's nothing. He assures my sister-in-law that Hannah is now engaged and lives somewhere in the same state as them. My sister-in-law then says, I found his contacts synced with his laptop, and there are two phone numbers for a woman named Hannah. Okay, bet. So my boyfriend and I start looking up these numbers. I never met Hannah, but I knew some specifics. She and my brother met back in 2012 2013-ish, and she lived down in South Carolina. One of the numbers matched a one Hannah F, who now lives in Arizona and used to live in, you guess it, South Carolina. During the exact time frame that my brother met her, so he made up the entire ayahuasca journey just to get a phone-free weekend with this woman who is probably on the ego high of a lifetime having stolen this married man away from his pregnant wife. Obviously, we're all upset. My sister-in-law is sobbing in my arms. I'm sobbing in her arms. It's a mess. My sister-in-law confronts my brother via text as he's on the plane ride home. Fast forward to now, almost a month later, and the jig is up and the news is out. Everyone in the entire family knows. While we're all very concerned that my brother is most likely going through his first manic bipolar episode, I'm still reeling from the fact that my brother, the man 14 months older than me, the cornerstone of my existence, is not the person that I thought he was. I mean, I literally have a living will drafted up saying he is the executor of my estate and the person who can dictate my care if I'm unable to. Now, I don't know if I would trust him to watch a fridge run. I don't know what to make of anything. This is obviously a developing situation, and it's very upsetting. I think the most upsetting thing is that my brother spoke to one of his best friends, a friend of almost 15 years, I would say, and he didn't mention one thing about his marriage falling apart or flying his ex-girlfriend out for the weekend with him or flying back down to Arizona again for another weekend with his ex-girlfriend. The only thing he mentioned was, oh yeah, sister-in-law plans to get a C-section. And his poor friend had to learn the hard way after his wife spoke to my sister-in-law about C-sections. My brother's attitude through this whole ordeal has been that he's the victim because my sister-in-law never lets him have a say and that the sister-in-law's parents are overbearing. He has been robotic in all responses and isolating himself with his ex-girlfriend. If he just wanted out of the marriage, he could have had a conversation he didn't have to go nuclear. If he really wasn't happy, why did they spend all that time on fertility? It makes no sense. Almost forgot. Apparently my brother's looking for engagement rings for Hannah. He is running up the joint credit card. Thankfully, sister-in-law has moved her income and opened her own private accounts. My dad is convinced my brother is a no good gold digger, but most of the family and friends think he is showing signs of bipolar disorder. The overspending on spontaneous flights to Arizona makes me agree with that thinking. But my brother did make gold digger remarks when he started going on dates before he met his wife. Didn't think anything of it when their relationship lasted so long. Any advice on traversing what is probably going to be the hardest year of my life? Anyone dealt with something similar? 
How did you maintain a relationship with your sibling? Did you maintain a relationship with your sibling? Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, I have bipolar type one. I've been in therapy and medicated for over a decade. Whether or not your brother is experiencing a mental health crisis, there is no relationship to maintain until he takes accountability and seeks help, if he ever does. He is setting his life on fire, and if you stick around, you will end up burnt too. Focus on supporting your sister-in-law. Comment two, I would be trading a brother for a sister and nephews right now, only because he shows no remorse. Your sister-in-law and nephews are family. You are just aligning with the side of your family that is not in the wrong. Mental illness does not excuse infidelity, lies, and lack of remorse. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for reading. So, two weeks ago, things took a turn for the worse. My sister-in-law called me in tears, saying my brother had come back from Arizona and immediately asked for a divorce. He didn't even try to explain himself or apologize for his behavior. He just said he was done and wanted out. She was devastated, and honestly, I was too. I couldn't believe he would do something so heartless, especially with the twins on the way. I went over to their house to try and talk some sense into him. When I got there, he was packing his bags. I asked him what the hell he was doing, and he just shrugged and said he needed to find himself. I told him he was being selfish and that he was abandoning his wife and unborn children. He didn't seem to care. He just kept packing. I tried to get him to talk about what was going on in his head, but he was completely shut down. He wouldn't look me in the eye, and he barely said a word. It was like he was a different person. I asked him about Hannah, and he just said, it's complicated. That was it. No explanation, no remorse. Just, it's complicated. My sister-in-law was in the other room, crying her eyes out. I went to her and tried to comfort her, but there was only so much I could do. She kept saying she didn't understand what had happened, that everything had been fine until a few months ago. I didn't have any answers for her, and I didn't understand it either. The next day, my brother moved out. He went to stay with a friend, and my sister-in-law was left to deal with everything on her own. She had to cancel the baby shower at their house because she couldn't face everyone with everything falling apart. She was embarrassed and heartbroken, and I felt so helpless. A few days later, I got a call from my mom. She was in tears, saying my brother had called her and told her he was moving to Arizona to be with Hannah. He said he was done with his old life and needed a fresh start. My mom was beside herself. She couldn't believe her son would do something so drastic and hurtful. I went to see my mom and tried to calm her down. We talked about my brother's behavior and how it didn't make any sense. We both agreed that he was probably having a manic episode, but that didn't make it any easier to deal with. My mom kept saying she didn't know how she was going to tell my dad. He was already so disappointed in my brother, and this was just going to make things worse. Meanwhile, my sister-in-law was struggling to keep it together. She was trying to prepare for the twins' arrival, but she was also dealing with the emotional fallout of my brother's betrayal. She confided in me that she was scared to raise the babies on her own, and she didn't know if she could do it. I tried to reassure her that she was strong and capable, but I could see the doubt in her eyes. As the days went by, my brother's behavior became more erratic. He started posting strange things on social media, talking about how he had found his true purpose and how he was finally free. It was like he was trying to convince himself that he was doing the right thing, but it just made him look delusional. One night, my sister-in-law called me in a panic. She had found out that my brother had drained their joint bank account and maxed out their credit cards. He had taken all the money and left her with nothing. She was terrified that she wouldn't be able to pay the bills or buy things for the babies. I was furious. I couldn't believe he would do something so cruel and irresponsible. I went over to her house and we spent hours on the phone with the bank, trying to sort things out. We managed to get some of the charges reversed, but it was a long and stressful process. My sister-in-law was a wreck, and I was starting to feel the strain too. It was like my brother had turned into a completely different person, and I didn't know how to handle it. In the midst of all this chaos, I started to think about our childhood. My brother and I had always been close, but there were signs even back then that something wasn't right. He had always been secretive and moody, and he had a tendency to lash out when things didn't go his way. I remembered how he used to disappear for hours at a time, and no one knew where he went 
or what he was doing. It was like he had always been running from something, but I never knew what. I also thought about our aunts and their struggles with mental illness. It was like a dark cloud that hung over our family, and I wondered if my brother was finally succumbing to it. I felt a mix of anger and sadness, and I didn't know how to reconcile the brother I knew with the person he had become. As the weeks went by, things didn't get any easier. My sister-in-law went into labor early, and the twins were born prematurely. They had to stay in the NICU for a while, and my sister-in-law was exhausted and overwhelmed. My mom and I did our best to support her, but it was a difficult and emotional time for all of us. My brother didn't even bother to come back for the birth. He was too busy living his new life in Arizona with Hannah. He sent a text saying he was sorry he couldn't be there, but he needed to focus on himself. It was a slap in the face to all of us, and I couldn't believe how selfish he was being. Now, we're all just trying to pick up the pieces and move forward. My sister-in-law is doing her best to take care of the twins, but it's a struggle. My mom is heartbroken, and my dad is furious. I'm trying to be there for everyone, but it's taking a toll on me too. I don't know what the future holds, but I do know that things will never be the same. Thanks for reading. Am I the idiot for postponing my wedding after finding explicit photos on my fiance's phone? I, 28 years old, and my fiance, 29 years old, are getting married in 15 days. Since there are only a few weeks left until the big day, I've been spending a lot of time getting last minute details and decor ready for the wedding. My last project was to find photos of us together over the course of our relationship, going on four years, to put together a sentimental photo album. My fiance is usually awesome at remembering to take a photo together almost anywhere we go on vacation or on dates. So I knew he would likely have photos that I didn't. We have always been very open about being able to use each other's phones though the necessity doesn't often arise. Even knowing this, I really should have asked first. But most of the time, I get a, you don't need to ask me to use my phone comment. While I was looking at his photo album, I saw a lot of explicit photos that I sent him, which we exchanged fairly frequently. I would say he has 100, 200 saved on his phone over the course of our relationship at least. These photos, of course, are not the issue. A photo caught my eye because it was an unclothed photo that was very obviously not myself due to physical differences. I opened it and saw that it was a topless photo of my fiance's ex-girlfriend's sister. This photo was dated from 2022, two years ago. But like I said previously, we were very much in a committed relationship at that point. Once I saw this, I started seeing many other photos, videos that were not of me. The remaining photos and videos we're saved from pornographic websites. I'm not a prude, we're all human. But the thing that struck me as off is the fact that they are saved in his photo album, amongst hundreds of photos and videos that I have sent. Some of the more recent ones are from just this last year. The problem I'm having internally with this is the fact that I send him so much content that it makes me wonder why mine is not enough. These are specifically photos, videos of women with large breasts, and I am definitely up there in size so it is extremely comparable to the things I send. But it's some other random chick from a porno or a celebrity like Selena Gomez. All of that aside, I cannot understand why he would have an unclothed photo of his ex's sister on his phone, for very obvious reasons. I'm so hurt by the whole situation, I haven't been able to think straight. I'm extremely self-conscious now when I didn't really used to be, at least within our relationship. He has always been the type to say how hot he thinks I am and how attracted to me he is. I've never once suspected him of cheating, and he hasn't displayed behaviors prior to this that would have made me think he was... Am I looking too far into this? Am I being too sensitive? At this point, I feel like all of the excitement of the wedding has been completely overshadowed by this feeling of distrust and hurt. Any advice would be appreciated. I'm wondering how someone else would feel in this situation. I feel like I can't talk to anyone right now about this. Now for an update, first, I wanna thank everyone who was genuinely supportive and helpful, who reached out to give words of encouragement and insight. I appreciate you, and you're the reason I wrote this in the first place. Unfortunately, we talked. I had a hard time keeping it together emotionally, I admit. He knew something was up once he got home and asked. 
I asked if we could talk and if he could be completely honest in his response. He agreed. I first explained what I had done in the first place, looked for cute couple pics of the two of us, which he had no issue with at first. And what I unfortunately found, I asked, why do you have an unclothed photo of your ex-GF's sister in your camera roll? Answers ranged from, I didn't know I had that, to, it must have been sent to me by insert friend name here. I asked how he thinks it would have gotten saved to his phone. The first answers still ranged around, I don't know, which then eventually broke down into, yeah, I guess I must have saved it then. I must have been drunk or something, I don't know. I asked if he could imagine how this would feel and how wrong this is given our relationship was very much committed at that time. He said he just saved it because it was breasts. He was extremely upset the entire time, cursing and raising his voice. I managed to stay fairly cool, but I was definitely crying by the end, which I know doesn't help. But I couldn't stop the emotion from flowing over. I told him how wrong this photo felt, that I don't care so much about any of the other stuff, just the one picture. And that for me to be able to even consider moving forward from here would require deleting the photo and talking to me about why it happened in the first place and setting in place some ground rules that we agree on together surrounding things like this in the future as a couple. He refused to confirm the pic was deleted. I asked multiple times and every time he would deflect with a comment about how I was just trying to make something out of nothing. I really just felt like I could have tried to repair things had he been completely upfront and honest. But there were certain things I knew to be untrue that he fibbed about during the conversation. He pretended to try to find the photo on his phone. I told him the exact date that I found it around because it was a major holiday. He maintained he hadn't found it yet. I know personally I cannot live the rest of my life feeling the way I do tonight. So if he doesn't decide to have an honest and open discussion about this tonight, I will be rethinking the relationship and obviously the wedding. Thanks again, Reddit. I wish this was a better update, but I appreciate having somewhere or someone to talk this through with. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. My advice is to not go through with the wedding. I'm not telling you to end your relationship, but I think this wedding needs to be postponed. So you can talk this out with your partner and decide whether you want to work through things or call it a day. Comment 2. His ex-girlfriend's sister. Girl. The universe is giving you an opportunity to dump this man. Who knows what else he's been doing? And I would tell the ex-girlfriend about the sister. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for sticking with me through this. After our initial conversation, things got even more complicated. The next day, I decided to take a break from wedding planning and went to stay with my best friend for a few days. I needed some space to clear my head and figure out what to do next. My friend was incredibly supportive and let me vent about everything. She reminded me that I deserved honesty and respect, which made me feel a bit stronger about confronting the situation. While I was away, my fiance texted me multiple times, apologizing for how he handled the conversation and begging me to come back home so we could talk things through. I was torn because I still loved him, but I couldn't shake the feeling of betrayal. I agreed to meet him at a neutral place, a coffee shop we both liked, so we could talk without the pressure of being at home. When we met, he seemed genuinely remorseful. He admitted that he had been defensive and that he understood why I was so hurt. He said he had deleted the photo and wanted to work on rebuilding my trust. I asked him why he had saved it in the first place and he finally opened up. He said that during a rough patch in our relationship two years ago, he had been feeling insecure and had saved the photo impulsively. He insisted that it was a mistake and that he had never acted on any feelings towards his ex's sister. I wanted to believe him, but I still felt uneasy. I told him that I needed more than just words to rebuild my trust. We agreed to go to couples therapy to work through our issues. He seemed willing to do whatever it took to make things right, which gave me a glimmer of hope. In the meantime, I continued to stay with my friend. I needed some distance to think about whether I could truly move past this. During this time, I started to reflect on our relationship and some of the red flags I had ignored over the years. There were moments when he had been secretive about his phone or had made comments that made me feel insecure. I realized that I had brushed these off because I wanted to believe in the perfect relationship we had built. One night while talking to my friend, I remembered an incident from a year ago. We had gone to a party and my fiance had been unusually flirty with another woman. At the time, 
I had confronted him, and he had brushed it off as harmless fun. But now, in light of everything, I couldn't help but wonder if there had been more to it. This memory made me question whether there were other things he hadn't been honest about. As the days went by, I started to feel more conflicted. On one hand, I wanted to believe that we could work through this and come out stronger. On the other hand, I couldn't ignore the nagging feeling that there might be more secrets lurking beneath the surface. I decided to attend our first couple's therapy session with an open mind, but also with a sense of caution. The therapy session was intense. The therapist asked us to talk about our feelings and what had led to the current situation. My fiance admitted that he'd been struggling with self-esteem issues and that saving the photo had been a way to boost his ego. He said he had never intended to hurt me and that he was committed to making things right. I shared my feelings of betrayal and how the incident had shattered my trust. The therapist helped us communicate more openly, but it was clear that we had a long way to go. After the session, we went for a walk to talk about what we had discussed. My fiance seemed more vulnerable than I'd ever seen him. He admitted that he had been afraid of losing me and that his actions had been a misguided attempt to feel more secure in our relationship. I appreciated his honesty, but I still felt a deep sense of hurt. As the wedding day approached, I found myself questioning whether I could go through with it. I loved my fiance, but I couldn't ignore the doubts that had crept into my mind. I decided to talk to my parents about everything. They had always been supportive of our relationship and I needed their perspective. My parents were shocked and saddened by what had happened. They reminded me that trust was the foundation of any relationship and that I needed to be sure I could rebuild it before getting married. They also encouraged me to take my time and not rush into any decisions. Their advice made me realize that I needed to prioritize my own well-being and not just focus on the wedding. With only a week left until the wedding, I made a difficult decision. I told my fiance that I needed to postpone the wedding. I explained that I needed more time to work through my feelings and to see if we could truly rebuild our trust. He was devastated but understood my decision. We agreed to continue with therapy and to take things one step at a time. This decision tested my fiance's true loyalties. He could have reacted with anger or tried to pressure me into going through with the wedding, but instead, he showed a willingness to support me and to work on our relationship. This gave me some hope that we could eventually move past this, but I knew it would take time and effort from both of us. As I reflect on everything that has happened, I realize that this experience has forced me to confront some uncomfortable truths about our relationship and about myself. It's been a painful journey, but I hope that it will ultimately lead to a stronger and more honest connection between us. Thank you for reading and for your support. Am I the idiot for kicking my partner out after he ditched me on my birthday to party with his ex? So it was my birthday yesterday. I woke up to find my long-term partner already up and out. Okay, whatever. I sorted out our toddler and got him ready for the day. He came back, and so I went out to spend some time with another family member and to have a break from being the main parent 24-7. I literally never get a break. So when he offered to watch our child, I took him up on it. When I came back, I was out for maybe two or three hours, if that, my now ex, complained about what my family member had bought me. Solar lights for my garden. He then proceeded to get ready and went out to celebrate his family member's birthday, which is the day after mine. But they had decided to organize a meal on my birthday. I obviously had no issues about this, but I wasn't specifically invited. Wasn't bothered about that either, as I wanted a chill day. Here's the reasoning for the post. Before he left, he said it was a meal. I asked if he'd given our child their dinner whilst I was out. He hadn't, so I had to quickly cook for our child. He also didn't tell me they were going clubbing after. Again, not bothered. But to be kept in the loop, so I A, could organize family to come spend some time with me on my birthday, and B, wasn't sat waiting up like an idiot would have been nice. No check-in messages, etc. Now here's my issue. I live so close to the city, you can see it from my window. It's like 10 minutes in a cab. His family member lives almost 20 miles from the city. Tell me why my ex decided to go back to his family member's house and sleep on the floor rather than coming back to his home. The only reason I can think is because 
there was a female there that he had history with. I only know this because his family member posted videos of him in the club with said female. I'm also pissed because today was meant to be mine to completely distress. He was meant to spend some time with our child and take her out. He didn't even tell me where he'd been or what was going on. I called him at midday to ask where he was and if he was okay. He sounded pissed from the night before. I called it quits and now I'm fighting my internal monologue to make amends. Help. Now for an update. First off, thank you for all your comments with genuine concern. I appreciate them more than you know. So he sat and basically slept since he picked our child up. He took her out for an hour, returned because I'd cooked dinner, and is currently stuck to my sofa asleep. He told someone he slept on the floor, but told me he hardly slept. I haven't spoken other than to say, do X, Y, Z with our child. I've kept to my guns and asked him to leave. I will not be giving the relationship another shot. I'm completely and utterly done. I've tried waking him up, but in the interest of safety, it's better he stays and sleeps rather than get behind the wheel and drives completely shattered. He's on the sofa and will stay there until tomorrow when he goes back to his own place. I just finished moving into my own place and he still has his place. We all lived together but had a quite serious relationship breakdown before. So I accepted a property and have just moved out. We've been working on the relationship for the past few months, trying to get things right. He started taking me for meals, etc. But now I realize he was only treating me that way. After 10 plus years of begging to have that sort of relationship. Because I now have somewhere cheaper to rent and would save him a substantial amount of money. I can't get over the disrespect personally. It's been 10 years of situations that I should not have tolerated. He has been a loving partner at times, but 95% of it now has been him causing me issues and I'm getting too old to deal with it. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one. Well, it sounds like you're pretty much a single parent already living with a man who isn't interested in being a father. So what difference would it actually make to your life if you only had to think about and clean up after yourself and your child? Comment two. Even if it wasn't your birthday, you are already a single parent. I can tell you life will get infinitely better for you and your child when you stop having to pick up after and dance around a grown man who doesn't respect you or your family. Now for the update. Hey everyone, a lot has happened since my last post. After I asked him to leave, he finally did the next morning. He was groggy and barely coherent, but I made sure he got into a cab safely. I spent the rest of the day trying to get my life back in order. I had to juggle taking care of our toddler and sorting out the mess he left behind. It was exhausting, but I felt a sense of relief knowing I was taking control of my life again. A few days later, I got a call from his family member, the one whose birthday they were celebrating. She apologized for not inviting me and explained that she thought he had already done so. She also mentioned that the female he had history with was indeed at the club, and they had spent a lot of time together. This confirmed my suspicions and made me even more resolute in my decision to end things. In the meantime, I started noticing some changes in our toddler's behavior. She seemed more clingy and anxious, probably sensing the tension between us. I decided to take her to a child psychologist to help her cope with the changes. The psychologist suggested some activities to help her feel more secure, and I started implementing them right away. It was heartbreaking to see her affected by our issues, but I knew I had to stay strong for her. One evening while I was putting our toddler to bed, I received a text from him. He wanted to talk and asked if he could come over. I was hesitant, but agreed, thinking it might be good to clear the air. When he arrived, he looked disheveled and tired. He apologized for everything and said he wanted to make things right. He even brought up the idea of couples therapy, something I'd suggested numerous times in the past, but he had always dismissed. I told him I needed time to think about it and asked him to leave. That night, I couldn't sleep. I kept replaying our conversation in my head, wondering if he was genuinely remorseful or just trying to manipulate me again. The next day, I decided to talk to my family member who had bought me the solar lights. She has always been a great source of support and wisdom. She reminded me of all the times he had let me down and how I deserved better. Her words gave me the clarity I needed. I decided to focus on myself and our toddler. I started looking for a new job that would give me more financial independence. I also reconnected with some old friends I had lost touch with over the years. It felt good to have a support system and people who genuinely cared about me. 
A week later, I got a call from his boss. Apparently, he had been missing work, and they were concerned. I told them about our situation and suggested they reach out to him directly. This made me realize that his issues were not just affecting me, but also his professional life. It was another reminder of why I needed to move on. During this time, I also started reflecting on my own past and how it had shaped my decisions. Growing up, I'd always seen my parents in a tumultuous relationship. They would fight, make up, and then fight again. I realized that I had been repeating the same pattern in my own life. This was a wake-up call for me. I didn't want my daughter to grow up thinking this was normal. I remembered an incident from my childhood when my mom had finally decided to leave my dad. She had packed our bags and taken me to my grandmother's house. It was a tough decision for her, but it was the best thing she could have done for us. That memory gave me the strength to stick to my decision and not look back. As the days went by, I started feeling more at peace. I was still dealing with the fallout, but I was also rediscovering myself. I started painting again, something I hadn't done in years. It was therapeutic and helped me process my emotions. I also started taking our toddler to the park more often. Seeing her smile and play without a care in the world reminded me of what truly mattered. One day, while we were at the park, I ran into an old friend from high school. We started talking and it felt like no time had passed. She told me about her own struggles and how she had overcome them. Her story was inspiring and gave me hope. We exchanged numbers and promised to keep in touch. A few days later, I received a letter from him. It was long and emotional, and detailing how much he regretted his actions and how he wanted to be a better person for our daughter. He asked for another chance and promised to change. I read the letter multiple times, trying to decipher his true intentions. While part of me wanted to believe him, I knew I couldn't go back to the same toxic cycle. I decided to write him a letter in return. I thanked him for his honesty, but made it clear that I needed to focus on myself and our daughter. I told him that I hoped he would find the strength to work on his issues and become a better person, but I couldn't be a part of that journey anymore. It was a difficult letter to write, but it was necessary. As I mailed the letter, I felt a sense of closure. I knew there would still be challenges ahead, but I was ready to face them. I had my family, friends, and most importantly, my own inner strength to guide me. Thank you for reading. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.